Oh my goodness. The good old I am not interested. Now, how many have heard of this one before? Comment below. I'm not interested. Well, we are happy with the, the vendors or supplies that we have right now. Or, you know, we're not thinking of switching any, anytime soon. I've heard of those objections, right? But basically, it's, it's variation of I'm not interested. Now, most salespeople, when they hear this objection, what I notice the most, the, the dumbest thing they would say is this, why are you not interested? Who gives a damn? They're not interested. Why are you arguing with the prospect? It's like the worst thing that you could say because now you're getting into a fight. Why does the prospect have to justify to you why they're not interested? Although, chances are the prospect is lying. Prospects lie all the time. But that's not how you handle it. You need to handle this objection with a little bit more finesse. And today I'm gonna to give you a few ways to do this. Now understand this. Salespeople, they get defensive when they hear I'm not interested. Suddenly they kind of like, ooh, they feel, they feel hurt because they feel like it's, it's a personal rejection. Well, it's not a personal rejection. Don't take it personally. There are so many other reasons why they're not buying right now. Sometimes it could be just be timing. May not have anything to do with you, your product or service just timing or budget or uh, they're not the decision makers. I could go on and on and on. So don't take it personally. Statistics shows 80% of sales require at least five follow-ups to close the deal. Five freaking follow-ups, right? So this is just maybe the first or second time you're talking to a prospect. You got a few more times to go. Don't worry about it. But what we wanna do is to get to the bottom line of this. What is going on, right? We wanna know. Here's something that you could say because, and I'll explain why we say it this way. Well, I, I'm not interested. Hey, Mr. Prospect, I understand. Let me ask you a question. The next time you're looking for blank for your product and service, could I be the first person in line that you speak to with blank? Hey, Mr. Prospect, I understand. Can I ask you a question? Next time you're looking for a new sports car, can I be the first person in line that you speak to to get a, maybe get a second opinion? Boom. Now you've set the stage. You're setting up for future business. You're getting some more information. All I'm asking is a permission to contact them, to follow up. They might say, yeah, sure. 99% of the time they'll say, sure. Because you're not trying to fight. Oh, why are you not interested? You know, can I be the first one in line that, that you, you kind of, check with or, or get a second opinion or get a quote, one of those queries, they'll say yes, great. And then now you have a perfect excuse to say, can I send you some more information so you have that right next to your, your, not your desk or right next to uh, your ordering information. Can I send you some information so that you have that in front of you? So next time when you think of us, it's right there. Boom. Very, very simple, right? That's one way to handle it. Second way to handle it. Before I get off the phone, what might have to happen before you begin looking for a different company, solution, product, fill in the blank. Now, this question is very powerful, write this down, memorize this, before I get off the phone, you're getting off the phone, you're not being pushy, you're not trying to twist the arm, just before I get off the phone, right? What might have to happen? Notice the word might, what might have to happen, right? for you to begin looking for. I'm not asking you to buy right now. I'm not asking the prospect to buy. I'm simply asking him, I'm asking her to, just what might have to happen? Now they might say, well, you know, it, the price would have to come down or I would have want to see these features. I would have won these things or I would have won these services. That's good. Write these down, so these intels, right? Next time when you follow up, you could use these things. Let's say in two, three months, you go back to the same prospect and say, hey, we have made some changes. Now we can actually provide all these services that you, you kind of talked about that you shared with me last time and you go from there. You see how this works? It's all about setting up for the next sale. You know, you and I both know, you're not gonna get the first sale right now, right? You're not gonna get that sale today. That's okay. We're setting up for the second and third follow-ups. You're gonna close those sales there. But instead of, oh, okay, you sound like all, all like um, defeated, that's not how it works. Now the next question you might have for me is, well, Dan, how do I follow up? When I call them back, what do I need to say? If you want me to teach you how to do this, comment below. If I see enough interest, 
I'll make a future video or multiple videos based on this. How do you call them back? What do you say? How do you open up the conversations without sounding awkward? Or you say to me, Dan, but I don't want to wait. Well, we run the world's number one training program for high ticket closing. It means if you're selling premium products and services and you want techniques, you want strategies and secrets to close more sales with ease without sounding like a slimy salesperson. That's what we teach. Click the link below and check out the program. In the meantime, here are what some of our students, our sales professionals have to say. I spoke to 50 uh, people or had 50 appointments and out of that only 11 were qualified. Three said no and the other five signed up for a $25,000 coaching program. I have the deposits for all of them and I've started four of them in the program. So I'm very excited about that. Hello, um, I haven't really been posting in a while. Been um, busy trying to make sure that I got some actual booms going and I'm happy to report that on Thursday, I was able to get my first boom on my third live call a 5k package and then also on um, yesterday actually on Sunday got my second one on the fifth call and what's even more exciting is that this um, course that I'm actually closing on is on cryptocurrency which I have like literally no experience no idea nothing uh, beforehand and I didn't even expect that to be what the influencer wanted me to close for him I just wanted to really really say thank you um, again and from the bottom of my heart I really am thrilled to be part of the HTC family so remember you're closer than you think what's up HTC fam oh my gosh I just got off my first closing call for my influencer very first call and it's a boom First real boom. I enrolled the client in a $4,000 package and I made a 10% commission, so it's $400. Woohoo! Happy dance! Yay! 